Hello, and welcome to Cyber Monday. With me, as always, is my entertaining co-host, <laughs> Mr. Dominic Vogel. Dominic, who do we have in this seat today? Mr. Redshaw, um, you're entertaining too, in a, in a different life, but... Uh, a little bit more uh, understated. Yeah, yeah, very subtle. Uh, uh, our guest today is Heidi Martin. Uh, she's a cybersecurity consultant uh, with Hijack uh, Security, and boy, she has a wealth of knowledge. You know, she's uh, held some very high-profile uh, positions in the cybersecurity world, and I think we're going to have a fantastic discussion with her. I can't wait to bring her in, so we're going to get Heidi in this chair. I'm going to go and sit in my chair, and we will be right back. Heidi, thank you so much for taking time to, to join us today. We're both really looking forward to the convo. Thanks, thanks time. for having me, yeah. Um, I'll, I'll get the ball uh, rolling here because I, I think we both have a ton of questions to ask you. Um, from a leadership perspective, when it comes to cyber security or cyber risk, uh, why is it that you know we're seeing a lot of uh, improvement at the enterprise level in terms of accepting cybersecurity and its need at the leadership level, but we're still really struggling to see that with smaller or mid-sized organizations. It's still sort of, stuck in the IT sector uh, or IT section. What is it that business owners or business leaders in the SMB community can better understand that cybersecurity is a critical business function? How, how do we make that sort of transition from IT to business? Yeah, I think it's still um, thought of as in many companies as an IT problem, right? Mm -hmm, we always mm -hmm. think, oh, if, if you don't have the, the, the budget for a person to head your security, you think, yeah. oh, well, IT is gonna handle it. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it has to. It's it's something that is much easier to instill into a company when the company's smaller. So it's mm -hmm. something to get as part of your culture as early on as you can. I mm -hmm. think yes. um, the more that people are aware that security is important to that to the company, the more that they know what they need to do. The more you build that into the culture, the more that they're accepting of it, and the more that they're willing to be proactive on it. Yes, mm -hmm. and and from a, like you mentioned the word their culture. Yeah, I, a, a lot of people still uh, to, to your point there with secure being seen in that technology mm -hmm. light, how important is that culture element? Like, Is that a foundational piece that organizations should focus on first? Yeah, well I think security is not something that uh, you can do alone, right? The yeah. company has to all be involved in it yeah. and you're, you will never have a security team that's big enough to handle Everything. every person in your company. <laughs> so a lot of the ownership has to be part of the individuals in the company as well. Mm -hmm. So if it's part of the culture, then it's understood that just like everything else you have um, as your job role when you sign on, security is also a part of it. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's the only way in the long term when your company gets bigger yeah. that you'll ever accomplish a good, strong security program. Yeah, mm -hmm. it gets ingrained in the company exactly. DNA, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, for me, uh, going along with culture is that people component because we think of security as people and processes and technologies. Mm -hmm. Dominic started mm -hmm. off with technologies. Part, part of the, the people component is awareness and training. Um, how, how important do you think that is and, and what does that look like as you work with your clients? Yeah, well, uh, people, people need to know what they need to do, right? Mm -hmm. They don't inherently, often security is a bit foreign to people, they don't inherently know what it is they need to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so that has to be part of the education, yeah. right? You have to understand in terms of your business, in terms of your business function, yeah. where are the areas of risk that you encounter and how do you handle that? Mm -hmm. And then again too, um, you educate that way, but people in the specific roles understand their job best, right? They'll yeah. always understand it better than you. Mm -hmm. So they'll always be able to see certain risks that you don't necessarily see. So the more that they know, the more they're mm -hmm. aware, the more they can build on that mm -hmm. and then communicate that right? exactly yeah. yeah yeah so there's they can be your greatest uh, weakness if they're not trained and if <laughs> yeah. they're not communicating yeah. or they can be your greatest strength as well yeah yeah so so we have the the technology which is important yeah. but it's not the whole picture and then we have the people and then there are of course the processes to talk to business owners about the importance of cybersecurity good cybersecurity processes and policy Yes. Yeah. yeah, well, the, the, I mean, to me, if you look at the policy and the process, the policy is basically setting up the, the, the guards, right? Yes. Is, mm -hmm. This is what we accept in our company, this is what we don't. I think that's something that you have to determine initially. Yeah. Um, it's hard to put in a lot of processes or say, tell people they should do one thing or not if it, you haven't actually indicated that this is acceptable or not. Mm -hmm. So to me, that's the first area. You build a policy, you say, oh, for example, um, you can bring in your own device or you can't bring it in, all these mm -hmm. kinds of things. Um, and then you have to, in, in order to make things more secure, 
if they're more consistent, yeah. um, that you tend to have more security. If people are doing things in an, in an ad hoc way every way, mm, yeah. that's when somebody will forget something and make a mistake. Right. So you can't put processor on everything you do, mm. and you don't want a business that has processor on everything. Yeah. But things that are done repeatedly or things that are critical that could create a large security gap, you mm. put some kind of process around that so that you can someone can just read the document and know what they have to do. They can have some kind of a checklist or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but you're ensuring that steps don't get missed. Mm -hmm. um, to me, that's an important part of it. Yeah. So, so what would you say in, in all of this, what would you say is the starting point for a company that really doesn't have much in, in the way of technology or um, policies or, or training? Mm -hmm. How do they get started? Well, I think before all that, you really need to understand your risks, right? Yeah. Security always comes down to a risk. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of like to, I like to compare uh, security to the medical field a lot. I find there's an, a lot of analogies there. And I've often said like, if a doctor were to look at the human body yeah. and you have a hangnail, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They could bring all the specialists and everyone and like focus and spend all the money on the hangnail yeah. and your toes great, but they've never noticed that you have like clogged arteries, right? Yeah, Which right. are way more important. So you need to understand your business, where your important things are, what, you know, what is at risk before you start putting in mm -hmm. uh, any kind of anything, any structure around that. Yes. Mm -hmm. So figure out what's important. Once you know that, decide what's okay for your company or what's not, right? That's where your policies fit in. Like, yes, we want everyone to be creative. It's fine for them to download whatever software they want. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Or no, it's not. Or what? So you build those guidelines. And then from there, mm -hmm. you start with, well, what are the repeatable actions that mm -hmm. could be risky and put some process around that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a really great visual about the, you know, yeah. uh, and, and you know, I think the other great point from that is that, you know, using the, the same thing with the hangnail. <laughs> Sometimes it's not always the visual stuff, yeah. uh, which is the biggest risk. You know, yeah. so it's the hidden lurking <laughs> stuff yeah, and in, that's usually in the, the background. The easy stuff, right, is yeah. what you can see. Yes. But if you don't actually take the time or you don't need people who understand your business as a system, yes. you mm -hmm. can miss really critical pieces. Yes, mm -hmm. well, that's interesting. I, I, I'd love to get your, your, your take on, on well, I've been seeing a bit of a trend in terms of how acceptable use policies uh, are written. And you know, for a lot of organizations, they are tend to be, they tend to be written in a you know, users will not do and it's like a huge list don't do this don't do this don't do this it tends to be more of a sort of a negative reinforcement approach yeah. and starting to see sort of a shift of that being moved from more of a negative light into I was I guess it's referring to it as a sort of intent based mm -hmm. uh, approach where it's saying okay here's sort of what we expect uh, of you our staff and here's the different actions you can do and how you can do them securely. Um, why, why is sort of the negative, uh, I mean, we, we've, we've seen this case time and time before in which just because you have an acceptable use policy doesn't mean it's always abided uh, by the staff, especially if they don't feel a sense of ownership uh, mm -hmm. uh, around that. Mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts on sort of, sort of the negative approach uh, versus sort of the positive intent mm -hmm. approach? Well, I mean, the positive is always better. Yeah. It can be difficult to accomplish, right? Because sure. it can be harder to lay out yes. <laughs> all the things you can do versus, yeah. well, we really don't want this thing to happen, yes. right? Yeah. But I think it comes with some education too, right? If you if you are clear about why these things are in place, mm -hmm. it doesn't seem like just an arbitrary list of things you can't do, which people tend to, yeah. to not feel good about, yeah. but if they understand the reasons behind that. So I feel like policies oftentimes have been very, they're written like a, from a legal perspective, yes. right? Yeah. So it's a lot of jargon and people don't necessarily understand it. Yeah. Um, I've kind of fought against that. I've, I've worked in certain areas of security where um, because you're audited, you need to have these kind of tight policies. Yeah. But I, I've always found that what is the intent like what is the real purpose yeah, right why? is it yeah is it really to get your people to follow it um, and understand it in that in that case ease up on the legal jargon or have a second you know a, a less legal version <laughs> mm -hmm. that lays it out with reasons and like more simple language yeah. Mm -hmm. um so yeah I, d I think i think if people i tend to think that if i understand the reason behind something i have a much easier time yes adopting it or following it yeah and i know it's Parents, I think, you know, Christian, I can relate to that, you know, in which if we tell you know, our children, no, no, we yeah. better have a damn good reason. Yeah. Right? yeah. So, yeah. Well, I, why? Yeah. Yeah. Why? I still have part of that in me. Yeah. I still yeah. tell you can't do something. I'm like, yeah. well, now I really want to do it. Well, exactly. I think that's human nature, right? right yeah. People well, know there's that curiosity. And that's a great point about the communication, yeah. having that crystal clear communication, because 
so many um, of these policies are, are written literally at a desk, yeah. uh, to your point. They're never properly communicated. They don't involve different stakeholders. Mm -hmm. It's generally put on sort of like an IT manager yeah. or security directors. But or, it's good information oh, in yeah, there. It's, it's all orthodox. It's stuff. very yeah, orthodox. Yeah, yeah. But it's just not an understandable in no. everyday Absolutely. language. Yeah, no. and it's happening in, in a vacuum. Yeah, and if people don't understand it, it kind of falls in line with what you were talking about earlier about not having it as part of your culture, but being like an IT problem. It's easy to say like, yeah. well, IT owns these policies, yeah. and that they like they'll take care of it. <laughs> they have the tools. Like this I don't really need to worry language. about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if you if you're more if you if you involve all of your business more, yes. everyone yeah. in the business, yeah. they they feel the sense of ownership, and it doesn't become just a like. IT will take care of it. I'll do whatever I want to do. I think uh, maybe this isn't a question, but just more of a comment, yeah. is that Dominic and I have discovered more and more that really smart people, like really good communicators, really sharp people, mm -hmm. don't understand cybersecurity or don't yeah. understand the basics. Yeah. So, you know, we're, we're trying to become more sensitive and aware of that. Yeah. I'm sure it's the same for you. Yeah. Just really bringing it down to uh, the business level and really, you know, everyday language. Yeah the 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 what and the why mm -hmm. yeah yeah no i agree I, I i think it's something i constantly get reset on because mm -hmm. having been you know i've been doing i've been in this field for 15 years or so mm -hmm. so it's it's just become part of the way that yes. i think yeah. and so it's hard for me exactly to to think how somebody who doesn't have that exposure would think mm -hmm. but but i think that that's so important and i try to put myself in the feet of like a developer, for example, right? I have limited experience there, so I wouldn't necessarily know all the things exactly. you need to do. So if I put myself, if they tried to explain to me things yeah. with their 15 years of experience, yes. I wouldn't be at that level. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it's a uh, take all of the assumptions out that they understand. Exactly. At least yeah, take not our even half of what all of our acronyms and our <laughs> so we have so many acronyms oh. and so much. Completely. Yeah. Completely. Yeah. It's still hard to uh, keep yeah. track of all. <laughs> yeah. All of them. Um, moving in a slightly, slightly different direction, um, something which you know, I think we're, we're seeing more and more of is we're seeing sort of regulations for uh, uh, breach reporting uh, mm -hmm. or, um, uh, or mandatory data breach reporting happening, and um, you know a lot of public sector organizations I think are more aware of this and probably more prepared, but sort of what we've seen and anecdotally have, have heard as well is that, you know, there's, is that sort of untold uh, dark underbelly with a lot of private organizations mm -hmm. in which you know, some of them will go through the right process and declare when it's happening, but others will be very hush-hush. And right now, you know, statistics are very, you know, inaccurate in terms skewed. of, and skewed, you know, what, when, uh, what types of organizations are being uh, honest and transparent, uh, but I'm sure there's a sizable uh, um, faction of mm -hmm. these private organizations which are not doing that. Um, how much of a concern is that? Um, I guess broadly speaking, mm -hmm. that'd be the first part of the question, and second part is, you know, you know, is that a smart strategy for businesses to just sort of? Well, I think I know what your answer will be, but you know, yeah. to just uh, push yeah. that under, under the rug. Well, it's understandable, right? I think that. For, if we had more of this data, yeah. we would have just so much more information. Absolutely. We'd have more information as to how attacks are, are happening, mm -hmm. what are the controls that are not working. Like yeah. We'd just have so much more insight and so much more ability mm -hmm. to fight this. Mm -hmm. But then if you look at it from the perspective of the business, right, they have a lot to lose. Yes, and, yes. and you have a lot to lose when you have a breach. You yeah. have to disclose that puts a lot of... Um, time and effort on your your staff to yeah. get all the inf information you need. You mm -hmm. have to talk to your customers, mm -hmm. and you you know that affects your reputation. Sure. There's like there's so many pieces that is a negative for the business yeah. that you can understand why they don't want to report. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It to me, um, th we need the regulation yeah. because in order for people's data and all that to be protected, that has to get you have to know. Yeah. Um, but I also think it would be great if we had something like. Um, you know, in the U.S., when it comes to, um, I'm going to get all the facts wrong. Here. <laughs> in the U.S., when it comes to uh, air traffic yeah. accidents and incidents, yes. right? They have a, a mechanism for reporting it, yes. like a blameless type of reporting, yes. where they report yes. and it's somewhat anonymous, I yep. think. And um, so, I think that anything that's like a near miss mm -hmm. yes. that we have in security, which we get tons of those, yes. right? Yeah. Where maybe very little got, like no 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 sensitive data got affected, but mm -hmm. you still had some kind of a breach that you don't necessarily have to report. If we had a mechanism to be able to report that mm -hmm. in a blameless, yep. somewhat anonymous way, we'd have access to so much more information. Mm -hmm. So there's the two things, like to me, there's the 
there's the information we're missing, mm -hmm. but then also as a consumer, as a person mm -hmm. who's providing information and all that, like your mm -hmm. data is also getting out there and you don't mm -hmm. know about it. Mm -hmm. So we'll follow up with you in the future yeah. about that yeah. anonymous yeah. reporting. We'll do a yeah. fact, we'll I'm do a not, fact not, check. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to take credit for it. I didn't come up with it. I heard this, but okay, and I thought okay. it was a great idea. When, Absolutely. When I, I mean, and yeah. con conceptually, I mean, re regardless of, uh, I mean, when it's, it's good looking at comparable or different industries to see how they handle yeah their own incidents. Exactly. And, uh, you know, I think uh, I agree with you. That mechanism yeah. in our field is very much missing. Yeah. And without that right data, we can't make, um, or it, it hampers our uh, ability to make informed decisions. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And that leads to uncertainty and doubt with, yeah. uh, with the businesses. So uh, I think that's a very valid point. Yeah. But yes, we will fact check you. All right, <laughs> all right. <laughs> so now I've got a two-part question. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's two sides of the same coin. So for what have you seen in your uh, in the last 15 years of examples of really great security when people are doing things the right way? What, uh, what are exists, some what exa Nirvana. examples? <laughs> yeah. Just, you know, like the, the models for you that stick out. Yeah, I can't say. Ho hopefully there is at least one. Well, I mean, there's no perfect, right? No. I've never yeah. seen perfect, yeah. and I don't know that everyone will ever get to perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but... To me, it's always it's always been a good good leadership mm -hmm. as part of it, right? Mm -hmm. So having a leader in the organization, your security leader, who is strong in terms of leading people and enabling people to do what they need to do, yeah. but also having a good relationship with the rest of the business. So what often to me leads to bad security is when the rest of the business doesn't understand why you're doing things for security. So when you roll things out, it's not met with a lot of like quick adoption. Mm -hmm. um, so I've seen places where, you know, whenever security would roll something out, whether it was like a multi-factor authentication or something like that, um, the CEO would get up and there'd be a conversation about like, hey, this is coming out. So if you, if you have people that are high up like that in the executive chain and they're, um, telling you about something and they're being excited about it, mm -hmm. it's much easier for you to be like, wow, this is a good thing for the company, I'm gonna adopt it. Mm -hmm. Versus it just being like, hey, IT's rolling something out again, it means we have to do more work, mm -hmm. you know, all of that. So I'd say like, there's a lot of pieces, you know, good, smart people that are curious and that are constantly digging at things and um, wanna know more about the technology and what's happening and different ways of solving problems. Like all of these are also good components mm -hmm. to have on your team, mm -hmm. but a good, good leadership. Good leadership uh, and good engagement. Good engagement, mm -hmm. good direction, like good understanding, good ability to really assess the risk and not focus on just one thing, like be able to really understand what impact you're having by the different things your, mm -hmm. your team's addressing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So like a, a 1A question then is, um, obviously that is something that they can help you do your job and help them better. Mm -hmm. um, what are some other other ways that they can really effectively engage with you so that you can get your job done and help them safely get where they're going? I think that's the, like, that's the key is, is engage. Mm -hmm. So the more, the more a business is willing to talk to you, mm -hmm. like the more they're willing to tell you about what they're doing to like get the cobwebs out and <laughs> right, like the, the more they, they tell you about... Yeah, tr the transparency, what's important, mm -hmm. um, the easier it is for you to understand what is the highest risk, mm -hmm. but also the easier it is to understand what will work and what won't work in a business, right? Because mm -hmm. you can take one problem yep. and tackle it different ways. Yes. And in one business, like that just might totally not work, yeah, yeah. but in another it might. So you need to understand who the people are in the company, yes. how they operate, what's important to them to yeah. put the right things in place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You may be hard pressed to uh, come up with uh, <laughs> negative uh, examples, but let's uh, you know yeah. whether there are specific companies or specific uh, industries, yeah. um, types of companies. Yeah. Um, what do you think are um, kind of the lagging industries or the lagging um, types of companies that uh, are probably the most vulnerable? Well, at the moment. Um, there's a lot. So there is some regulation around certain industries. Mm -hmm. There is becoming more requirements from uh, boards to have more security. So mm -hmm. so for the larger companies, mm -hmm. there's a bit more, not incentive, but requirements to, yes. to have, um, so, to address security to some, to some regard. Mm -hmm. Smaller businesses, especially ones that deal with uh, customers directly, so yep. uh, B2C, yep. Yep. Um, there's less push out there, there's less regulatory or, or um, any, re any things that push them to spend the money on security. Right, right. Um, 
And I think in those, it's really important to understand how security can actually allow you mm -hmm. to grow more. Not only is it like a good thing to have, you're gonna protect the data, all that. It can actually become an asset. It can be mm -hmm. so something that yes. differentiates you from your other competitors. It can yeah. be something that speeds things up, right? Like if you have a sales process that includes information about your security, yeah. you make that process a lot faster rather than having a customer asking you and then your salesperson is coming and asking everyone on the team, do you know this, do you know that? Mm -hmm. If you have all that information up front, you can mm -hmm. speed up those cycles. Yes. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of ways that you can look at security as being um, a competitive advantage Absolutely. And, and use that. And you're getting the added benefit that you're also protecting the data. Absolutely, it, it, it's very much a, it has the ability, especially like you said there in the B2C, to improve the overall customer experience. Yeah, oh yeah, so, yeah, mean, the trust and all the that. Tru abs absolutely, customers. absolutely. Yeah. The, the um, uh, uh, last question that I'll ask you is, you know, ransomware is still mm -hmm. you know, all, all these years later. Yeah. I mean, we've seen it evolve over the past, I don't know, three or four years. Um, in, in what we're seeing is that there's a lot of, especially small and mid-sized businesses that are basically putting themselves in a position where they would rather pay the ransom than proactively invest that in, in becoming more secure. Mm -hmm. And you know, cyber criminals are taking advantage of the fact that they that they know that and they're pricing it accordingly. Mm -hmm. um, just as a way of you know, informing and educating sort of our, uh, our viewers, mm -hmm. um, why is that a dangerous strategy? Like, to me, it doesn't sound like that's sustainable. <laughs> well, you have, there's no contract between you yeah. and the ransomer, yeah. right? So mm -hmm. there's no, there's no reason for you to expect that you're going to be able to have your data decrypted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then just the fact that they're able to infiltrate your systems to that extent yeah. and alter all of that data. Yeah. To me, I mean, if they can do that, what's, what's the next step, right? right you, exactly. you obviously have limited um, limited the security that's protecting your information. <laughs> exactly. And yeah. it's not, you know, protecting from ransomware isn't that difficult either. It's no. not a like a highly uh, sophisticated attack. Mm -hmm. Patch your systems, it's yeah. the basic stuff, yeah. right? Patch your systems, have good backups, backups have yeah. your backups offline, yeah. mm -hmm. um, do just the basic things. So to me, having that, it's going to protect you from ransomware, but also a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. So. It, it, it to me is a very risky practice and yeah. I don't know how successful companies would be just saying, well, we'll just pay the ransom. Yeah. And plus, until you get that key, you're down, right? Yeah. So can you stand to be down for a day, two days, a week, however long it takes you to get your data decrypted? Yeah. Yeah. No. On, on that note, uh, you know, for <laughs> the, the viewers, a big takeaway there is do the basics and, and, and do yeah. them well. Yeah. Amen. Um, yeah. Absolutely. And yeah. Uh, Heidi, thank you so much oh, for taking you. time out of your busy day yes. coming in studio. Uh, we really enjoyed the convo. That was fantastic. It was good, thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. Dominic, awesome conversation with Heidi. My uh, my biggest I would say takeaway from that was just, and it really resonated with me. I was I was just saying I want to reach into her mind <laughs> and really pull out what she was hinting at about all of that competitive advantage of cybersecurity, how it can facilitate your sales and your entire business. So I really hope to be able to speak to her more about. Yeah, that. absolutely. And and she's Heidi is flat out awesome. You know, like she's one of the sharpest cybersecurity minds I'd say in, in, in Greater Vancouver. And um, I think the uh, best thing I think that she said, uh, that at least resonated with me the most, mm. was the bit at the end there with uh, that organizations need to do the basics. Mm. You know, there's nothing uh, overtly uh, special or intrinsically difficult uh, mm -hmm. about cybersecurity, uh, cybersecurity um, but it's about just doing the basics and doing them well. That can mm -hmm. really just go a long, long way. Mm -hmm. Awesome, completely agree. Thanks for watching. You can listen to our other podcasts on conversationsthatmatter.tv and we will see you next Monday. <laughs>